My name is Susan Schreibman. I'm professor of digital humanities at Maynooth University, and I'm one of the co-authors of the text encoding and TEI module. And I'm going to talk about markup and metadata. Metadata is structured information. It describes, explains, locates, or makes it easier to retrieve or manage any kind of resource, be it analog or digital. Metadata is often called data about data or information about information. Metadata has been around a long time. For those of you who are old enough to remember the old-fashioned card catalogs, books or other resources were cataloged under the title or the author, and this provided a surrogate for the object itself. It also gave information which allowed a user to go and retrieve the object uh, from the shelf. Metadata also comes in formats of this, like a Library of Congress classification system, which classified objects, originally analog but now electronic, under broad thematic categories. Metadata that, as a term, is used differently in different communities. Sometimes communities refer to it as machine-readable text, and other communities use it for records that describe resources, electronic or otherwise. In the library world, metadata is used for any kind of formal scheme or for resource description. It is applied to any type of object, digital and non-digital. Markup, on the other hand, is a way of annotating a text or a piece of text that distinguishes it from other text. It's used for text processing, but it's not visible typically to the user. We use markup to distinguish any number of things, physical characteristics of a text. So is this piece of text bold or in italics? Is it in a paragraph or verse format? It can also be used for syntactical meaning. So for example, is this a piece of text an adjective or an adverb? It can add what's called extra textual information. So putting a note in the text or it could have what's called processing instructions, which is instructions usually at the top of the file so that another program can uh, further process the text. Typically, there are three kinds of markup, presentational, procedural, and descriptive. Presentational is what we use a lot in programs like Word. It's called WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. It allows you to format a text and get really nice formatting. Procedural markup is embedded in the text. That's what I mentioned earlier. Usually it's the top, and it gives information about how to process this text for other programs. Descriptive markup is what we do most commonly in text encoding, where we put information, as I described before, about maybe parts of speech, we put information about how the text should look, maybe the original text. And this is also often called uh, semantic markup. Markup is a term that comes to us from the print world. It comes from the practice of editors marking up, up proof sheets that would be given back to typesetters to correct uh, errors in books that would be typeset. Computer markup dates back to 1967, and this is when William Turncliffe developed a markup language for processing text, which separated the information content, so the original, the primary text, from the formatting. What we use in the SGML family, that's what TEI uses. The descriptive markup is separated by angle brackets, so the processor knows that anything in, a, in the angle brackets is information for it to understand how to process the text. 